Hello world, the famous Keyshawn Johnson said there are too many germ spreaders in the world. Well, I refuse to be a germ spreader and I choose to be a joy spreader. Welcome back to my interview segment, Joy Spreading. I'm your host, Sam Adams, and I understand that asking people the same boring questions is only gonna get you the same boring answers. So rest assured, we will keep it lively. I'm excited to introduce our next guest, the OC of USC, Graham Harrell. Graham, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here. Awesome. First of all, can you tell us what OC stands for? Offensive coordinator. Okay, so th I'm glad I'm glad we can start here. I often get confused if it's offensive coordinator or offensive coordinator. And so I spend a lot of time on the phone with donors, and I've accidentally told many people that you're uh, the offensive coordinator of USC. But I'm glad to know that it's offensive. <laughs> Has, have you met anybody else that have experienced that struggle? I haven't, but <laughs> I guess it could be either one. I like both of them. Okay, good, good. Well, to start us off, um, air raid offense. Everyone is super excited about that. I was wondering if you could just explain what that is. Well, I think the uh, roots of it go way back before uh, before my time, probably. Yeah. But and I'm actually so sorry <laughs> to cut you off. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. If you could explain it using the Skittles that I've provided, this is more so air raid offense for dummies. So here are your little players, and if you could just help the world. Are understand. we red or are we yellow? Uh, we're red. Okay. How's my football field? I guess it's good. Like everybody, we're gonna play with five offensive linemen. Okay. Put the center with his S down so everyone knows where he is. <laughs> That's perfect. And then there's gonna be a quarterback. He's usually gonna be in the shotgun. Okay. Oh, I read all about being the shotgun. The shotgun formation on Wikipedia. There we go. So that way, uh, that makes it partially airy. Okay. And then there's gonna be two, at least two receivers. Usually three. A lot of times four. <laughs> wow. And then That's a running fun. back. And there's the air raid. And now I guess we'll take one more yellow one to represent the ball. Okay, he snaps the ball. Yeah. Then what happens? Still looking downfield, pressure still coming, and now unloads down the sideline. London goes up and makes the catch. Slovis now going deep. Down the seam, up for grabs, and it's caught by St. Brown. A pocket for Slovis, time. Looking deep towards the end zone, slipping and falling down is Hicks. And Pittman's open for a touchdown. Okay, wow. And then all he's got to do is catch the ball and run to the end zone. It's that easy. Oh my gosh. I love the air raid. So do I. <laughs> wow. It's that easy. <laughs> it's that easy. Okay, and I love Skittles too. Now what happens if an offensive lineman is eaten? Probably a good thing. <laughs> okay. Well, then you only have 10 players on the field, so. <laughs> we need to eat one of their guys, maybe. <laughs> that, good plan, good plan. Well, honestly, that was really the only football question that I have. So, moving on to Texas. You're from Texas. What do you love about Texas? To me, you should judge you judge places by three things, weather, people, and food. Mm -hmm. And Texas is definitely dominant in two of those, so. Which ones? People and food. Okay, just making sure. I don't know if people <laughs> like sweating or who knows. I like the heat. I don't like the tornadoes or the hail or the springtime storms. Um, but I will say that I've enjoyed my time out here too. But uh, obviously, I'm biased towards Texas. I've spent most of my life there. And uh, coming out here, you're like, ah, it's not Texas. And then you get out here, and it's pretty good. So I can't complain. All right, I also heard that everything's bigger in Texas, according to some light Googling, and that they don't have small sizes in any restaurants, that everything starts at the medium. Is that true? Well, they offer small. Oh, I heard that there's no such thing. That word doesn't exist in Texas. It shouldn't. But you know what I mean? If you get a small like a small anything yeah. in Texas, it would be like three plates in California. Really? You know, yeah. And, and I, I mean, I try to be healthy, so I appreciate California trying to look out for our health oh, okay. and not overloading the plates all the time. Uh, but every now and then it's nice to go in there and you're like, ah, I'll just take the small steak. And all of a sudden, the, just this monster thing comes out. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's really what I needed. So, you know, like, I think deep down they know, even though you say small, you really want something big. <laughs> you're just kind of ashamed to say it, so they give you something large anyway. Now, when is the last time that you've worn cowboy boots to a social event that was not a costume party. Well, I think John David would, uh, Baker would be a better person to ask than that because he wears them daily, it seems like. <laughs> me, on the other hand, you know, and, and my family actually grew up on ranches. Not like me personally, but my, my father's family, they're all mm -hmm. ranchers except for my dad. And, um, but I try to stay out of the cowboy boots, to be honest with you, which would probably make most people mad back home. This is the last Texas question. What state do all of your exes live in? Texas. Okay, good, because I'm going to play the George Strait song <laughs> yeah. right now as we're talking about this, and I've, I've heard that all, everyone's exes live in Texas. Well, definitely mine, okay. but I don't know everyone's, but 
I, can, I can't speak for that being true about my... All your exes. Okay, yeah. perfect. Well, um, we survived the Texas segment. We're almost done. Rapid fire questions. I have six of them for you, all right? So I'm going to ask them and then you're going to just answer them. What's your fake laugh? <laughs> was that real or fake? I feel like that's pretty good. <laughs> but was that, that was fake. No, I thought that was... Ah, uh, that's really real. Okay, so try one more time. I'll be quiet. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was not even a little bit good. Okay, next one. Shoes on or off during a plane ride? I usually keep them on. Every now and then, it depends on the shoe. Okay, like these shoes right here are really comfortable. Cowboy boots. <laughs> cowboy boots are staying on because they're not easy to get on and off. So, but if you're sitting next to someone and they're barefoot, are you very upset? Flipping tables? No. I uh, see. I'm not a germaphobe. Yeah. I'm not a like be comfortable, be you, and oh, wow. and if bare feet your deal. No, I want their feet to be clean. <laughs> no, let me let me preface it with that. Like, if someone's like filthy with bare feet, I'm not gonna be happy. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> okay, that's but, like, fair. Yeah, but if you've showered and you're clean, like, <laughs> okay. do you ask the barefoot person next to you? You can kind of tell. Oh, you can tell for <laughs> sure. I would think. <laughs> like one, the smell, and two, you can kind of look. But yeah, I mean, I want people to be clean, but I don't have a problem with bare feet. <laughs> Well, that was my real laugh. Okay, next question. Would you go to a Nickelback concert? Yeah. Thank you. I would too. Yeah. A lot of people really don't like Nickelback and it, it upsets me. I don't me. understand the hatred towards those people. Thank you. But I think it's that everybody just likes being a part of the group that hates on Nickelback. Nobody actually hates Nickelback. I agree with that. No one, like, it's the cool thing to not like them. Exactly. All right, if they're in town, can we get a group to go to the concert? I'm in. Okay, good. If you want to go, I'll I, go. I actually don't think they're touring still because of all the Yeah, probably because all the hate. But you know, the hate might have made it more popular, to be honest with you. Uh, would you chaperone your son's prom? No. No? What no. if he asked you to? Yeah, I, I'd do something like it for him, but okay. I'm not like going to volunteer to do a lot of stuff like that. Like, <laughs> you got to let kids be kids for one, and so, uh, you know, I don't want to always be hovering around. But the other thing is like, Let's be honest on prom night. It's probably like a good basketball game or something. Like, I'd rather <laughs> sit there and do that than watch high school kids dance or not dance. Probably not dance more than anything. Kind of sit on the walls and awkwardly try to figure out if they're like doing well with their girlfriend or whatever, you know? <laughs> All right, good. Uh, fair enough. What's a restaurant that you love so much that you would most likely jog to get inside because you're just so excited? So there was a place in Texas called Bob's Steakhouse. Mm. I loved it. No, it's, it's nice. It's high end. So, you know, you're probably going to be dressed pretty well. Yeah. But I would get excited about going there. Um, I like taquerias if they're really good taquerias. Yeah. Like I, there's some really good ta in Ennis, Texas. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's called because it's in Spanish, so I'm not exactly sure what the what what it's called. Mm -hmm. If you want, I can probably find it. But great taqueria. Ooh. And so when I get there, like yeah, I would I'd hit the jog to get there. <laughs> so good Mexican food or a good steak or a good pizza. You okay. know what I mean? I like pizza, but those would be uh, there's a place called Gambinos in Moscow, Idaho, across the border from yeah. Washington State. Oh my gosh. I would jog from Washington State no to way. Moscow for my first Sunday uh, Gambino's Pizza. So I like Gambino's. I like this little Taco Rio Nenas. I like Bob's Steakhouse if you're looking nice, like upscale. Yeah. Those would probably be my three that I'd get the most excited about going to. Okay, and last question. If your life depended on it, mm -hmm. your life depends on it, what's a song that you could sing every word to? I'll be. I'll be? Mm -hmm. Is that by Edwin? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Huh. okay. I'll give you like the, 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 the back and you can start. There you go. <laughs> Wait, where are the words? <laughs> I think you know them, obviously. <laughs> no, I'm giving you the tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're killing it. You keep going. <laughs> what, right. what were the words right there? I'll be your you... crying shoulder. Keep going. I've done in the superstar. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, well. I like uh, it, though. Um, this next second to last segment is called your time so like i said my goal here is to provide people platforms so i feel like everyone in the world provides a very self-serving platform or a biased platform so what's something that you want the trojan family to know about usc or usc football that's a good one there huh let me think for a second you know i think that um and i tell everyone this i think usc is a really really special place mm -hmm. and um and I, I obviously i haven't been here too long but the little time i've been here it's been unbelievable and, uh, you know, I think that's something that a lot of people, probably my message or, or the thing that I would say that's, that I like the most about USC is one, I think the Trojan family is awesome. 
not only on campus but outside of here anytime we run into Trojan fans now I'm sure they all have opinions on what we should do and, and how it could be better but at the end of the day they love the Trojans you know what I mean and so uh, that's something that's that's been really cool to see since I've been here uh, but the other thing that they probably don't you know I think a lot of people especially people that are in the Trojan family know that about the about USC and about this place uh, you know I think something that's, that that isn't as seen um, is how good people we have in in this building you know what I mean and I think it starts with coach coach Helton he's as good of a man as I've ever worked for he cares about families he cares about people um, and so so that's cool to see to see a guy that um, is in this profession and still trying to do it the right way and treat people right and he does a great job of that and also how special our, our kids are and our players are because um, coming from you know I've never probably been at a kind of a blue chip or you know one of the top programs in the country and so you come here thinking yeah I'm gonna have talented players probably with really big egos that are gonna be tough to deal with and stuff like that uh, and obviously everywhere you're gonna have a couple guys that, that you know man I, I could strangle you on certain days but <laughs> but at the same time I would say almost all our kids are awesome people you know I mean not only are they really good football players but they're good people and uh, they love football they're competitive and uh, they make working with them a joy to work with and what's a goal that you're currently working on it could be personal it could be professional it could be anything but what's something that you strive for right now something I strive for uh, you know I think professionally my my goal um, is someday I want to be a head football coach and that's mm -hmm. that's always been my goal and, and uh, so in, in my professional life, uh, I would say that's my goal. You know, outside of here, um, I've got a great family, you know, a wife and a son and, and, uh, and really good friends and most of them are here. So I get to spend most of my days with my friends. But, um, you know, outside of here, my favorite thing is just to hang out with, with, with Hawk. And then mm -hmm. he's gotten to the age where it's really fun to hang out. You know, he's four and, yeah. and you know, yesterday had a little time off. So I was at the house and, and uh, there's times where you're just like, what are you doing? Because I was sitting there playing I forget what I was doing. I might have been doing a crossword, and the whole time he was just jumping on my neck and then jumping <laughs> off my head. I mean, I was just his diving board the whole day, and it's like, man, what are you doing? But um, but it's some of the more special times I've yeah. had, you know what I mean? And so I'm getting to spend time with him is awesome, and my wife, and then, uh, like I said, in, in my professional life, my goal is to, to be a head coach at some point, and, and uh, so I'm working on that. But in the meantime, like I said, I love where I am. This is a great place to be, and, and so just try to make the Trojans the best team we can be every day. That's awesome. Um, in closing, I need you to help solve a lifelong controversy in my own personal life, all right? I love giving people gifts. It's, it's one of, you know, just my greatest joys in life. And to me, the more personalized the gift, the more thoughtful it is. I like that. But according to the rest of the world, um, you know, the, the more personalized the gift, specifically when it has people's faces on it, um, it, that's a little bit creepy. I think that it's thoughtful and loving. So if you could just settle the debate. Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. You know, that we talk about like love language, or there's that book about the five love yeah. languages and gifts, giving one of them. Mm -hmm. And that's probably my weakest. I, that's, that's not my talent. So I'm a bad person as far as like how to give good gifts. Mm -hmm. As far as receiving gifts, I'm good at that now. So I think I'll be good on this. I think personalized gifts are the best way to go. Maybe not with their face on it though. <laughs> well, I'm so glad that you said that. On behalf of the whole Joy Spreading team here, I'd like to present you with your gift. You'll be able to use this probably for the rest of your life. It's a phone charger, a wireless phone charger. I think it's a good gift. <laughs> okay, but you know, you can just show the camera. I, I mean, what is more personalized and thoughtful? <laughs> you can put that in the staff room. Everyone can get charged up with Graham Harrell. Now I like that. Yeah. Because we have a, we have a, our board in there. I wish we were in there. We have lots of quotes on it. And one of them is, if you're juiceless, you, you're useless. Yeah. So and I now we're giving everyone juice from me. <laughs> Joy spreading. I mean, that's an incredible photo, a great tagline, and such a useful item. Is uh, it's it's wire, it's cord. What is it now? So it's it's a phone charger. So get this. You just plop your phone on there, and it charges up. This is gonna be. This is gonna be. I'm gonna have to give it to you. This is a great gift. Now, the face. <laughs> I don't know. But it is a great gift. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. This was an absolute blast. And to everyone watching, stay tuned, stay deep, and spread joy. We'll see you next time. Don't, don't.